In these problems, we're dealing with something called compound inequalities. So in these problems, you have more than one inequality, and you've got to maybe solve them and then put them together in a way that makes sense. Let's take a look at this first one. It says solve x plus 2 is less than or equal to 5, and negative x is less than 5. So the first step is just to solve each of these on their own. This first one's pretty easy to solve. You're just going to get x alone by subtracting 2 from each side, and you get x is less than or equal to 3. This one's a little trickier. It's not solved, although it almost looks like it is. There's a negative sign in front of the x. We've got to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of it by multiplying everything by, or dividing everything by negative 1. It amounts to the same thing. It's just going to change the sign of everything. But you have to remember that when you uh, multiply or divide by a negative 1, uh, and it's an inequality, you've got to flip the inequality sign. So over here I get a positive x. I flip the inequality sign so it becomes a greater than, and over here I get a negative 5. Now at this point, what I really like to do is just sketch this out on a number line. So I'm going to put in my negative 5 here, and this one says x is greater than negative 5. It doesn't include the negative 5, so, but it's all this stuff up here. And then this one, let's put my 3 in here, x is less than or equal to, so it's this stuff this way. So the question is, because we have an and here, where do they overlap? Well, and it's really just that stuff right there. So how are we going to write that little chunk right in there? Well, some of it's done for you already. You have x is less than or equal to 3, and then think about flipping this one around, and we'd have x is greater than negative 5, and that expression shows that x is between negative 5 and 3, including the 3. Okay, let's do the next one here. This one is another type that can be a little bit tricky. Uh, we've got negative 8 is less than or equal to 2x plus 6 is less than or equal to 4. What the heck? Uh, how are we going to solve that one? Well, the first step is to break this into two pieces. The first piece is this one. Negative 8 is less than or equal to 2x plus 6. And the second piece is this one. 2x plus 6 is less than or equal to 4. So that's really two problems, and this is how we break them apart first. Now we're going to solve each of them individually. Let's see, to solve for x over here, I think I'm going to subtract 6 first. I get negative 14 is less than or equal to 2x, then divide by 2, oops, negative 14, and I get um, negative 7 less than or equal to x. And over here, let's see, I'm going to subtract 6 again, and I get 2x is less than or equal to negative 2, and I divide by 2, and I get x is less than or equal to negative 1. Now, this is an and problem like we had up there, too. Um, and so you might want to sketch this out. You've got negative 7, you've got negative 1, and x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 7, so all the stuff going that direction, and x is going to be less than or equal to negative 1, so all the stuff going that direction. So it's really this chunk in the middle again that we're looking for. And we're going to try to line it up the way we did last time. And if you notice, you can just take this part right here and bring it on over because you've got the x in there already. So just write the rest of that one and you've got it. So x is between negative 7 and negative 1 inclusive. All right, one more. This one says solve 3x plus 4 is greater than 10, or 3x minus 3 is less than 18. So or is a little bit different than and, but you start the same way. You're going to try to solve these for x. So let's do that. First one, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. I get 3x is greater than 6. We divide by 3. We get x is greater than 2. This one over here, we're going to add 3 we get 3x is less than 21, we divide by 3, and we get x is less than 7. So we've got x is greater than 2, or x is less than 7. So if you think about this on a number line, x, well, here's our 2, here's our 7, x can be greater than 2, or it can be less than 7. And 
if either of those things is true, then, then you're good. So what does that really cover here? Well, it covers everything. It goes up all the way up to infinity. It goes all the way down to negative infinity. So your answer for this one is going to be something like all real numbers. So that's a little bit of work with compound inequalities.